Hi, hello everyone. Um, hope you can hear me well, firstly. Um, my name is Kenny Olani and I'm delighted to welcome you all to this event co-hosted by Black and Irish and HubSpot. Um, a quick intro. So I am with Black and Irish. I have, I'm pre previously I was the ENTS coordinator and I'm now the podcast co um, director of Black and Irish. And I've been with Black and Irish um, since February 2021. Um, a little bit about Black and Irish before we sort of get into the event and um, what the event is about and introduce our um, lovely guests. Firstly, uh, also, I wanted to welcome you guys again and thank you for joining. Hopefully, this is going to be a really good time for you guys to sort of learn a bit more about ERGs, learn a bit more about Black and Irish, about HubSpot and sort of connect and network with each other as well. So for those who don't know, Black and Irish is an organization that is here to highlight and celebrate the identity of Black and Irish black and mixed race Irish people. We aim to spread awareness around the world of the experiences, struggles and successes from with our, within our community. Our mission is to engage with the wider Irish community, try and come together, celebrate um, our black and mixed race Irish identity and to spread awareness by telling our stories. Um, so part of what we do is to engage and partner with businesses like HubSpot to find ways to better engage with them, with the Irish, black and Irish community and work on ensuring our organization is championing their organization actually is championing diversity and inclusion and anti-racism. So I suppose that's where this event comes from. We wanted to celebrate, um, we want to collab celebrate Black History Month and collaborate um, for Black History Month. And after meeting with the brilliant team of HubSpot, we identified there was a great discussion to be had around the role and impact of Black employee resource groups, ERGs, um, and the community and their communities in Europe. So we went out and found a panel of ERG leaders and DI and B practitioners who will be sharing their views and best ways for the dating to amplify the voices of Black, African and Caribbean people in the workplace. So the layout of the event, we're going to kick off with a Q&A with, with our panel, which who I'm going to introduce um, shortly. Then this session will um, be followed by a virtual networking um, session where we be breaking out into breakout rooms and we have the opportunity to connect with each other and have uh, have a bit of discussion over some points that we've um, created for you guys. Hopefully that all sounds good. Um, there will be an opportunity to ask questions as well. Um, so definitely store up your questions if you have any. Um, we have some really great speakers um, that are going to be chatting, chatting to us. So hopefully you'll get, you'll learn a lot and we'll learn a lot as well. Um, this is my first time moderating something like this, uh, especially virtually. So um, it'll be a good opportunity for me to sort of learn a little bit more about ERGs, HubSpot and um, yourselves as well. So I suppose without further ado, um, I'd love to introduce our, um, our guests. Um, and I think they're going to be probably best placed to introduce themselves. So what I'm going to ask is each of our guests to come off, um, off come on camera and introduce themselves and I'll start with Helen Rowland. Hi everybody, can you hear me? Yes. Brilliant, thank you. Thanks for that, Kenny. Um, like Kenny mentioned, I am Helen. Um, I'm from Black Women in Tech Ireland. And in addition to that, I work um, in a, as a global forensic accountant in Accenture. And the reason I'm sort of here is because founding Black um, black Women in Tech started as being part of an ERG in Accenture and just a project just kicked off and I just, you know, there was a space for there for an ERG, for a network to be created. It's just the fact that it started from Accenture. Um, so that's a bit about me. I'm really, really excited to get to have this amazing discussion with you all and look forward to learning from you guys and, you know, the other speakers. So hand it back, Kenny. Thanks, Helen. Um, I will I'll introduce uh, Connor now, if Connor can introduce himself. I think you might be on mute, Connor. Hi, thanks, Kenny. Uh, no hi, everyone. My name is Connor Buckley. Um, thanks for your time today. Um, I set up an organization called Human Collective. Our mission is to spread a message of equality 
Um, first and foremost, we were a sustainable clothing brand and all our clothing has the equal sign. The universal, universal symbol of, of equals stands for equality. It's a subtle message that we use. Um, we donate back to three different charities from the sale of our clothing. One is Sari, which is Sports Against Racism Ireland. The second one is Irish Jude Foundation to provide hot meals for disadvantaged children. And the third is the LGBT Ireland. So um, I guess our mission is to spread a message of equality and it's across gender equality, um, opportunity equality, racial equality and uh, LGBT equality. Um, my mother was, a, was an activist and campaigner. Her name was Christine Buckley. Um, she, I guess she's best known for exposing, exposing a lot of abuses in the Catholic uh, called the Ashing Centre, which means dream in Irish. Um, she was uh, also well known for winning uh, Woman of the Year, um, uh, Volunteer of the Year in Ireland and also European Volunteer of the Year. So um, she, activism was always in our blood and in our family all the way growing up. I think what's important about her message, obviously she was a strong black woman, but also she stood up not just for black people, but for everyone. Um, so her mission was always about justice for people and that everyone would be treated equally. So thank you very much. Thanks, Connor. Um, appreciate the overview. Um, and I'll introduce now Adebola. Hi, everyone. My name is Adebola, and I'm a product marketing manager with HubSpot, with a lot of focus on our developer community. So HubSpot is a CRM that is helping millions of companies grow better globally every day. Um, if you've not, not heard of our, our um, HubSpot, nice of you to check it out, hubspot.com, plug in that in there. Okay, so um, aside that as well, I'm a very strong member of our ERG community, one of the leaders of, of in the council. And uh, this is just because I love being a, an amplifier and a great advocate of the Black community, at, either at work or even in life in general. I believe so much that if one person lifts another, soon enough, all of us will get lifted. So I'm happy to be here. Lovely to hear everyone's perspective and to share mine as well. Thank you, guys. I'm back to you, Kenny. Thank you very much. Um, and now I will introduce Bright. Thanks, Kenny. Thanks for having me here. Um, I'll introduce myself. My name is Bright. Um, I'm a sales lead within Indeed. Uh, we help people get jobs. And what I do is actually try to uh, help the company to focus on helping everyone get jobs. So that's why I was part of initiating the Black Inclusion Group um, in Amsterdam uh, a few years ago in 2019, and now actively in the role of events team lead. So I'm assisting the regional co-chair in reaching our goals. And that's like helping people within the, the, the Black community that work for Indeed, but also people that are in Black to gain knowledge on what are the differences we have, but what are the similarities we have as well? So we can celebrate that and also be a better uh, assistance to our clients in, in the full support. So yeah, that's me. And I hope to share knowledge and learn from everyone here as well. So uh, I hope everyone has a good session. Passing the word back to you, Kenny. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Bright. Um, and then last but not least, um, we have Janine. Hopefully she's back on. Hello everyone and I apologize my computer crashed just as I was about to log on so um, I've had to swap laptops so thank you so much but it's an absolute pleasure to see all of you and there's so many people on the screen that I can't fit everyone in so I'm Janine Francis and I have the absolute privilege of being on the Blackboard for HubSpot. In my um, day job, I lead diversity and inclusion for EMEA and LATAM in LinkedIn. And I wear so many hats, including being a mum to two little girls. Um, in my former life, I would call myself a bit of a community activist. Why do I say that? Because I spent a lot of time in the local community creating opportunities for cultural exchange. I'm active on the school board and I just take every opportunity to create 
equal opportunities and cultural exchange wherever I can. And also, fun fact about me, I lived in Ireland for two years. So absolute pleasure to be here and I look forward to connecting with you all today. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Janine. I'm glad, glad you're back on with us. Um, can't wait to hear um, from you. So thank you all for the intros. Um, hopefully we'll get to know you guys a little bit more, especially with your roles and particularly your roles with ERGs um, and sort of uh, and, and the conversation we're going to have today. So I suppose we're all here to talk about ERGs, but depending on what company you're from or sort of what sector you're in, they might have different names. So it could be IRGs, BRGs, employee networks, affinity groups, or just other acronyms. I suppose my first question would be to um, Janine, and hopefully you could be able to help me answer this and hopefully be able to give a bit of context to people on the call as well. So what are ERGs? Thank you so much, Kenny. So other than all of the terminologies you used, I would really say that ERGs are safe spaces for different communities within work environments to get together. Now, that say and, and allies, but I would say primarily it's with people of a, a common identity or common background that get together in this employee resource group to you know, meet, have fun. Also, they may have collective goals. There may be areas of um, work projects that they want to um, focus on as a group together. But that safe space is, in my opinion, the, the beauty and the strength of employee resource groups. There are also that there are also spaces for allies to connect with a community, to support a community, to lean in and help reach an objective goal. I'm actually meeting with a number of black ERGs across London. So I'm looking forward to it from my professional hat but also as a black woman in tech, it's a safe space for me to show up, be myself and share my experiences. And, you know, with a community where I don't have to explain my very being because they, they already understand some of the experiences I have professionally and personally. Thank you. Um, really good overview of that. And I suppose it actually gives me a little bit of um, context as well. So, I suppose I didn't ever, I introduced myself as black and Irish, but professionally I'm with um, Guidewire Software. And I started about a couple of months ago and it was the first time I heard about ERGs and specifically that term and stuff like that. So it has been a big learning curve for me and myself to sort of learn a bit more about like the affinity groups and what ERGs are and sort of how they are that safe space and still trying to get involved a bit more in, in Guidewire myself. So thank you for that answer. Thank you. And I suppose, then my my follow-up question is like many ERGs especially back ERGs have started in the U.S. and are, are more of a sort of a U.S. kind of concept and it's something that we're obviously doing a lot more in Europe and I suppose my next question is to Bright and would be like can you tell could tell us why they've worked in the U.S. and why black ERGs have worked in the U.S. and like what can we learn from those experiences? Uh, thanks Kenny. Um, I think I think that's a very interesting question, and, and that question is actually based on history. Um, and when I say history, is that there's a very long tale of stories uh, about Black people in America who have been very present in the in, in let's say the moving forward of America. Uh, even even think about Harriet Tubman. There's so many stories you could just bring up where we know that the Black history is embedded in American history. So obviously we all know the problems that were in the States uh, in the past years, even talk about slavery or even, um, even the, the, the long times where they weren't even able to vote. So it has been driven forward by so many groups. So it made a bit more sense when it landed there to talk about IOGs, ERGs uh, to move forward. It's a bit more adopted in modern day. Um, so I think the idea of educating your colleagues or your coworkers um, is, is a bit more smoothly and went more seamlessly compared to when you think about it at uh, compared to the European area uh, where 
with you there, it's a bit more harder to push that agenda through. So what we've, for instance, seen in the Netherlands is that when we started with the um, IOG's uh, inclusion research group in Amsterdam, the big question was like, why do we need that here? Because that's something that's needed in the States. We're all right. We're all right here in Europe. Uh, whereas when you look at that, what was mentioned recently is that people always like to find a group where they can really fully be themselves. So first thing, when you walk into a new company, you try to find like-minded people, um, but also people that look like you. That's the way you feel a bit more comfortable. Um, and that's what we try to set up with the IOGs as well. Um, however, every country has a way, a different way of accepting that and every company has a different way of accepting that so i think that's where the challenge lies um, for us here in europe but i do believe that it's a long game um, a journey of a thousand miles starts with a first step so we've taken our first step that's what all of us here in the call are for um, but it's just important to have that endurance the resilience to make sure that you reach your end goal Thank you. A really, really, really great answer. And I suppose one thing I picked up on there is as, as you're based in the Netherlands and you, you spoke a bit about the sort of the difficulties of getting um, an ERG set up there or like the conversation going. I suppose I'd love to ask um, someone who's based in Ireland, um, Adebola, if you're, um, what have you found has been this sort of maybe reception to ERGs in Ireland and um, and how sort of how you how challenging has that been? Okay, so I think um, ERGs as a whole has been quite good. Like there's different communities, different groups. But so when you're talking about the black ERG, based on my experience, coming into HubSpot about over a year ago, I came in and I thought, oh my goodness, I'm going to get in there and it's going to be all black. We're, we're ruling, we're getting in there. And then I found out that, oh no, we're part of a group called Emir All, like everybody else that is not white. I'm like, why? Like, you know, but that was the group that we were put into. And then we started to scratch it and find out that in the US, they have something called Black Pop. So you would think, oh, Black Pop. So that's everybody that is Black in HubSpot. But no, it was just for the US guys. Even when you go into the Slack channel, you say, hello, it's almost like, uh, who will you, uh, will you be, where you call me from? You know, so that was the experience. And then with time, we started to, I started to understand that, okay, they're not that way because they have their own gate set. It's because they have their own experiences, just like Bright said. They have the things that motivate them. They are driven by separate kind of story. So we then started to see for ourselves that, hey, what can we do and what can we celebrate on our end? And with great opportunities like this, which is Black History Month Europe, we started to have an opportunity to where we could craft our own stories and start to show it to them as well. And then we had something called Africa Day as well. That gave us an opportunity to come together as a community with our own kind of story and build. But to say that the US, their stories are not valid, mm -mm. I think that they have built something that is amazing. We can take that craft our own stories around it, and then build on that. I don't think it's to be neglected. They've done something great. But how do we take that and make it our own? Uh, and I'm really, really bright on that. Like, take our own part of it and then really, really establish something that will resonate with every Black person in Europe, in Ireland, in the UK, and the like. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, no, I, I really appreciate that. I suppose the question I have, so just on the back of that, is like, what is that what is what has been that sort of key thing that you've sort of taken uh, as sort of an ERG in Ireland um what have you tried to sort of grow what like is there is there something specific that you've sort of tried to build the ERG on or is it just a mixture of things for us like I said is like we were able to gather around Africa Day because most Africans most Black people in Europe, I realized that either from the Caribbean or from Africa. And with that, when we had the Africa Day, for example, we just put out one information and we put out one nice song by Ashake and we put out one nice, you know, tweet, one proverb in there and everybody just gathered. Like, yes, I remember this. Oh my goodness, flags, flags, flags were flying. And then people just felt like, oh my, is this one I can feel at home at? And then you were talking, people were bringing their languages, people were going into groups with their own country folk. Oh my goodness, that, just the fact that we're coming from somewhere 
And our story is a bit different. And the fact that we can then say, hey, our home is not too far away, but we're here to actually do well. So that we can show them at home that, hey, we've done something with our lives. That, that motivation is quite different from those in the U.S. Like our motivation is a bit different. And so being with people of that same spirit, that same motivation, I think it really drove us together to start to ask ourselves, that how do we now make this community an ERG that stands for what it is that we believe in, what we are motivated in? So that, just that common story, that common motivation, that common driver where, where we're coming from began to become a foundation for us and that's i think why we're also here today that's really really good and i suppose that's one thing that i can sort of from my experience of being with black and irish and it's one thing that we sort of built ourselves on is telling that black and irish story and saying now we're we all we're not monolith but we all have like really similar experiences and really similar sort of um uh, lives that sort of have that we want the opportunity to celebrate that and to share those stories and share those opinions and views and things like that so that's really great to hear and I suppose a question for you Helen um for this we have a number of people from different companies um on the call and I suppose some might have ERG some might not what is I suppose it's my question is twofold if you don't have an ERG how like what advice would you give to people sort of starting one and then for people who do have an ERG or people who do start one, how do you foster that participation and that growth? Yeah, that's that is a loaded question. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think you, you can probably get some help from other people like, as well. <laughs> um, I think um, I think the first and thought most, um, I think right now, like with this ERG, like you know the work that we are doing, that that is creating a lot of momentum, and a lot of people are aware or are expecting um, some sort of like, you know, ERG network or a diversity network. So um, what I would say um, in what we did was um, in Accenture before we started, we don't call, we don't use ERG. We just like to call it an IND inclusion and we just call it a network because we have a few. So what we did was just really, we had like a, um, what a design thinking session with a few of um, African, you know, people for black people in a center and we're like trying to understand what their pain points are and trying to understand what they need because I think what's important is that you're building this network around a need um, in the organization so I think that would be the first part trying to understand just you know the rest of the black people there what what is it that they want why what would this ERG do for them you know and then once you have that sort of there you have that in um you know, you have the, the ideas there. And then it is about approaching um, the leaders. Uh, in every organization, there is typically an inclusion and diversity lead. There always exists one. Um, so what you would do is approach them to that. And then that, because you've already collected the data, then you can really, really sell your story and say, we need an energy group because look at what our employees are saying. Look at the change they want to see. Look at what. So, that, so that's how you would start it. And once you have that then, is then going around and building a team. And usually the people who were part of your design thinking sessions will be the ones to sort of, you know, okay, let's, you know, let's make that happen. So that was what you do. That would, that's what I would expect. I would recommend anyone to do. And that's what we've done in, in a center. We have our one is called African Caribbean Network. That's ours there. But that's how we really started. It was started from the gain the employee voice. Because what you want to do is you want to like, what is like, what is the meaning? You know, what do you want to create? What do you want? To, that's quite important. So once you have that, then you can get the leadership support. And in fairness, they're very supportive. It doesn't exist. It's not that um, like they don't care or anything. It's just somebody hasn't, you know, you haven't done that sort of groundwork mm. and, uh, and then to sell, you know, sell that story. So, yeah, so that's the first step. And then outside, was that, what was it, Kenny? What was the this, second? The second bit was about sort of how do you sort of, encourage that participation and that and like sort of growing on from the initial sort yeah and um, so we see that's why I said I think the first start is trying to get the buy-in from other I think before you start try and get that buy-in try and get those stories try and get those voices so that then when you have that then it's you don't have to convince them because they were with you all you know they were with you when you were deciding what you wanted so then it's all about that. It's all about, okay, I, okay, we said we're going to do this. Now, okay, I'm going to put my hand for that. 
and it just it just makes it very you know again if people uh, people around you who are already committed to the you know to the purpose what you guys are trying to achieve and then it's about you know really saying okay we said we're going to do a b you know a b z and we now have commitment from leadership and okay so how are we going to do it when are we going to do it and it's just basically assigning actions it's that simple um, and then like you know getting your getting marketing out there you know spread the word word it's not very difficult um, but I think the first part is understanding you know what what do people want I think that is the first step okay they want this how are we going to do it so I think it's very so that's what I would suggest and um, that's how we've done it and once you have that up and running and then you see people attend events and they're like okay I really really connected with that story I really really connected with that event you know I want to and then you start to get feedback and ways to make improve it and ways to make things better and then before you know it, your community you're like oh wow and then you can see the impact so I think that's it it's I know it may, it may seem everyone is like oh my god ERG it's hard but that's really it's quite simple it just really does start with somebody being accountable just okay we need to have this because of x y and z these are the ideas you know these are the, you know what um, the community are saying now let's go with leadership and say well, now we have that okay and then it's just about just getting on with it so i know <laughs> no uh, <laughs> I, I i get you i think like from, from my point of view it's like it's like with anything in, in when you're sort of working in a company you have to just get business buy-in and you have to sort of build build like a business case for it um for example you do yeah, similar yeah. it's very similar in this regard where you have to sort of get that um data show it's needed and then sort of get that buy-in which is yeah it's, I suppose it's great advice but it's, I think something that people don't like sometimes you need to see it as like another job or just the same way you're trying to get a sort of funding for one of your projects it's the same way you're trying yeah. to get funding for an ERG or something so, no, ERG. yeah it is yeah it basically it is but I yeah. think what would help you is if you have you know if you have the commitment you know from the yeah. community from the onset because then it doesn't feel like you're taking that on your own but then it's you know the community and it's everybody feeding into that so. yeah and I think I think that's something like I suppose we can all see that like it's definitely there there's definitely people wanting to do things like this and create these spaces so it's about sort of trying to harness that community and um I suppose a question I have um for you Connor on a sort of like from a company point of view, um, sort of how can companies empower and amplify Black, African and Caribbean ERGs? And, and what do you think like they can do to sort of really help um, foster that participation and help that in that growth that we've been speaking on? Thanks, Kenny. Um, yeah, I think Kellen's actually answered a lot, a lot of that in the sense of, um, you know, doing getting, getting the data, getting the research, research um, understanding what you're and listening to your employees and, and what they want and um, I think senior leadership buy-in is absolutely massive I found that companies that take the box and some companies that really walk the walk are the ones where senior people are in the room well, I've been in the room with a couple of CEOs and you can see that the diversity and ERGs is really high on their agenda and I think that sends a message to the entire workforce um, that this is a high priority um, and and you know, I, I often think about, you know, how, how we're all on this call and, I, and I'll ask a question to the, to the audience. And I think there's some great uh, conversations happening in chat. But, uh, you know, Kenny, how why Black and Irish started and why Human Collective started is, is, is probably a knock on effect. Just from listening to everyone else um, of, of, of something that happened. Does everyone know, remember the date, the 25th of May 2020? It's quite a significant date. Uh, does, any, does anyone want to pop in the chat box or say what happened on that date? 2020 may 2020 25th of may something significant happened in the world well, anyone <laughs> anyone uh, yeah thank you uh iman yeah exactly so george floyd passed away think about that that was an so that happened in america ten thousand miles away or more and if you think about where black and irish started human collective started it was probably the inspiration behind that in lots of ways whereas the whole black community mourned and came together as a community and and but not but even more significant than that the whole world showed empathy i think for the black community for maybe one of the first times where the whole world came together where there was black lives matter marches and loads of white people joined the marches you can see by today's call there's so many white people on today's call so i think it was the first time the world showed empathy and the significance of that was something happening in america but it also meant meant that marches all over the world started to happen 
And I think that helped to build the RGs and build the argument to senior leaders to take this more seriously. And if that incident didn't happen, and it's obviously extremely unfortunate, someone was murdered, but it just, I, I think it accelerated um, the importance of ERGs in companies. It accelerated, I guess it brought it to the top of the agenda. It wasn't just as part of the agenda, it was the agenda. Um, so I think that's had a huge role to play. So of, often society, society, issues in society accelerates these things. Um, and I often remember, this is an amazing educator in America called Jane Nellett. She's probably 88 years of age. Uh, and now she's like, she's been, a, she's, she, she did an amazing experience. I'd say I call it an experiment, but it probably was an experiment after Martin Luther King died. And she talked about there's only one race to human race. And it was the first time I've heard someone talk about that concept in a way. You know, we talk about mixed race. We talk about Asian people being different, black people being different. No, there's only one race to human race. And again, I think there a lot of more, there was a lot more empathy among leaders. There was a lot more humanity shown for leaders. And it wasn't just, I guess, for black people. And it was for all all employer, whether it was LGBT, whether it was gender equality. Um, so I think the whole world has just shown more of an empathy, which is, I think, certainly helped people like Helen and, and everyone, Bright, and, and, and so many people on the today's call set up the ERGs and uh, get real momentum behind them. Thank you. Yeah, and I think, I, I think that's one thing that I've seen um, recently is that, like, there is a lot more sort of buy-in from a lot of, like one thing that Black and Irish have seen, there's a lot more buy-in from a lot of companies, a lot of companies reaching out to us to do things like this, like like with Hotspot, where it's really about sort of educate that education piece, um, that sort of um, teaching and mentoring piece. Because unless people like are like you can find like a lot of information you can find online and you can sort of read up and stuff like that, but sometimes it's maybe more important to sort of have these events where people can come together and speak as a human you know to to someone and face to face so i think it's quite important and i think you hit the nail on the head up there from like, with like senior leadership and i suppose one question i had on the off the back of that is sort of to you janine and like sort of from your perspective of leading a dni um team and sort of being part of hubspot's black advisory board sort of what has how have you found the conversation like in the past couple of years with the growth of ERGs, with the sort of growth of more speak, uh, more sort of um, conversation about um, inclusion and about sort of um, just showing that the, the companies are taking a stance against sort of racism, against inequality, all that, all that kind of stuff. I would say I'm going to start with a really honest response. So initially, um, yes. the summer of 2020 was one of the hardest times in my life as a black professional and I put the black before professional because I was leading conversations, coaching and advising all levels of colleagues whilst being part of the affected group as well and that was oof, it's bringing back moments for me it was it was a it was incredibly difficult um and one of the things that was difficult during that period of time was, um, yes, there were, to Connor's um, earlier point, there was protests um, globally and there was solidarity with the global black diaspora. But what I would say is, and, and I'm not talking necessarily in the confines of just LinkedIn, because I speak to colleagues across different tech companies, the focus in, on colleagues internally was um, North America or America to be um, specific and what that meant was colleagues, black colleagues, black communities in other parts of the world felt um, not listened to and I remember a conversation of a few colleagues and professionals in Brazil and other Latin American um, countries. And they said to me, George Floyd happens every day here and no one protests. And I cried. I had to turn my camera off because 
I cried. I couldn't. I couldn't hold it together when she said that to me. And what I would, what I would see as the watershed moment is a maturity in organisations in terms of how they talk about race, how they talk about allyship, um, not being so focused on one geography. That moment really over. So, so I shared this. With, with colleagues internally where I work in my nine to five and um, I shared this with other colleagues who are not necessarily at LinkedIn um, but I would see there's a real maturity and now when I'm meeting um, people in my day job or at HubSpot or other professionals who I happen to talk with the conversation that happens without necessarily being prompted by the DNI person in the room is what about the perspective and the nuance of people outside of this geography? And I would say before 2020, that wasn't readily happened, happening. It was very much, we're looking at it at the perspective of where we're situated. And now I'm really pleased when I hear people outside of the DNI, a DNI team say, hang on a minute, can we weave in the experiences of um, people in Germany, in Sweden? They're not so invisible. So what, what I've seen happen is typically invisible voices or unheard voices are now being brought to the table. And that maturity has meant we can really push, I would say, the allyship conversation because it's, it's fine being an ally to people who are visible and heard, but how are you really stepping into allyship to the unheard and the unseen? And now those people are being brought into the conversation and there's a whole emphasis, emphasis on nuance. So how something shows up in France versus the UK versus Germany versus um, some of the Latin American countries is very different. And before it was a blanket approach to ERGs, DNI policy, allyship, but now it's kind of, well, how, does, how will this work in this environment? And I'm seeing more colleagues being brought to the table from different environments, from different geographies, and their perspective really being weaved into when we're developing something new. When we're looking for a sponsor for an ERG, typically ERG sponsors would always be from a, the same region, but now we're having sponsors from different backgrounds, different geographies. So I've really seen a real maturity over the last two years of that. And thank you for all the lovely comments in the chat. I, I can see them, so I appreciate that. Brilliant, thank you so much. I really appreciate, really appreciate your answer and especially the vulnerability of it. And sort of, you got to a really important issue I mean, you answered it so eloquently. And then I suppose following on from that, the whole point of black people not being a monolith, someone just mentioned there is something that I always, um, I think we always espouse when even in sort of Ireland, for example, um, although like black and Irish, for example, we try and represent black, Irish and mixed race people, we know not everybody's the same. Not everybody's gonna agree with some of the things that we or some of our events or some of, the, or some of our approaches. But that's fine. But that, and that's that's important. That's important to know. It's important to sort of um, address, and it's important to sort of hear those voices and hear those um, and hear those opinions because I think that's how everybody hopefully will sort of. I think someone said about them um, everybody bringing everybody along, you know, and that's how it, you bring everybody along and listening to all those different perspectives. And I suppose a question to more. Um, we're just coming up to time on um the er the sort of discussions i think we have a bit a few moments but so a question to everybody is like just on that question of how have you found the how do you think we can sort of continue to help that conversation like for example um right you in um you're you're based in the netherlands how have you found sort of 
interacting with black people in the Netherlands and sort of engaging them in NRGs and has there been have you found that there's been um uh a moment where people are now realizing that like people in the Netherlands are quite different to for example people in the US in the way they sort of tell their stories even just the way they live and how they interact as a ERG does, does that make sense I'm sorry if I can if I, I said a lot there so I don't know if it was confusing or not you went like this and then you went like this and then I was like yeah. oh Kenny bring me back yeah I <laughs> <laughs> but my question is basically in that in the Netherlands how have you found sort of dealing with the the thing of not realizing that not everybody's a monolith and the the situations in the Netherlands is probably not it's not the same as the situation in Ireland or the situation in the US for example yeah so I think what's the most important thing um, about this is that when you start dealing with your IGs you invest you're also learning I think that's the most important thing you're never perfect you're never outlearned you're learning on the way because it's actually a company within a company. That's the first thing about the RIG. So everything that you do is kind of like a business case. So you need to have a story that backs it up. Um, if you approach it that way, that will help you to also convince senior leadership because they will ask very strong questions about that. So that's more from the serious side. When we talk about the emotional side, which is something you cannot discard, um, people that have the emotional intelligence to understand your message, it will resonate with them. So it's very important to also make sure that you talk about how people are feeling in their current role. Um, am I able to do my work to the level that you require for me? Uh, do I feel at ease within a team? Can I be my full self? Um, and I remember someone said something funny a few years ago is that you would like to bring your full self to the company, but sometimes for some people be good not to bring their full self because when they bring their full self to the company, they won't be able to show their best selves. But the idea of being your authentic self, make sure that your colleagues see you for who you actually are. So what I've seen when it comes to, for instance, Amsterdam, because I can only speak of Amsterdam, is that the idea of, um, bringing this forward we really had to start with a story something i experienced in the office to create that shock that shock wave in the company like wow did that actually really happen and that's the way i try to bring it forward as in this is why we need it in the office so people will be more cautious in the way that they speak because before the imb uh, and the black inclusion group in, in indeed i wasn't aware of inclusive way of talking that that's a way different journey um, as you can see in the in the in the call, we've been saying a lot of you guys, guys, guys. Where I learned that's not the right thing because there are also people that don't um, associate to being a, a male or don't have a, have a gender at all. So you should actually address people by hi all. So it's a journey that we all have on the long run, and I believe that um, once you're able to open your mind to learn more, that's when you start becoming better. And that's different from the US than from the Europe, but also different based on where you are as a person in life. How willing are you to take on the challenge to learn and to educate more people within the company? So to give to give the, a more concise answer, there is a difference, but I think because in the US, they are more educated about the black history and push that agenda. Whereas I think I liked what you said there, Adebola, about people from the Caribbean and Africa, they have the agenda of bringing their full self as the African that they are. So we are a bit more closer to the history that we have. But I think what is very important about this call is that if you have the focus to educate yourself and people around you, that's when you hit your goal. It's not about bringing all of us people of color together and having a great time and feeling empowered, but how do you also educate people around you so that they understand why you are the way you are? That's when you have that growth within a company. And that's where you can actually have that synergy in collaborating to reach better potential, better numbers for the company as well. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm glad you were able to answer the question based on my sort of roundabout question. <laughs> answer the question based on my roundabout question. Um, I suppose I have two two, la two last questions if um, Jill will let me um, give me the time. So firstly, my first one to Connor. 
like how I know we've spoken about sort of bringing your best self to work and how people can encourage people to bring their self to work. How do you as like a company owner empower your employees to sort of champion that inclusion of, and bringing themselves their best self to work and sort of encouraging them to show their whole identity and and, and things like that. So how, how do you, how have you navigated that? Yeah, really good question, Kenny. And um, I think I think Bright mentioned earlier on that we're all on a journey together. We don't have all the answers. We do have a social psychologist on our team. Um, she won Activist of the Year there in uh, the Black and Irish Awards. And Momobo has helped us understand that. How do we feel like we belong? How do we feel like, you know, everyone wants a more diverse workforce? But diversity is probably more of an outcome than actually... Um, uh, you know, diversity, inclusion, belonging is, is is the way it's phrased, but nearly diversity is nearly the outcome. You know, people need to feel like they belong first. I think um, we, we have to be authentic to ourselves. Um, we've got quite a, a unique kind of eclectic mix of people on our team. We, you know, we've got activists, campaigners, social, social psychologists. And I think the spirit, what's quite interesting is I think we've been very fortunate that a lot of kind of good people have come to the organization have been attracted to the organization for what we stand for so we've naturally had um, an organic enough approach to recruitment that people have come just because i can think, think they like what we stand for we always get messages people that don't want to collaborate or work with us um and, and that's really kind to be honest with you. It's, it's pretty inspiring and i think when you're in a, a a tough time you're in a tough time in business you're in a tough time in an organization those people kind of fire you along because they've got so much of a purpose behind them that they they give us a bit of a, a bit of drive so if i'm honest with you i think we've naturally just had a lot of um good people join us um and, that, and that's 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 really helped the business and i think having that diversity is really important because not only helps us to understand diverse markets but it keeps us our core values um really rooted you know because uh sometimes during difficult times uh it's really difficult to keep focus on what our mission is and um and to celebrate those wins and those wins could be anything from providing like meals to disadvantaged ch children you know we've provided over a thousand meals and those are those are really important and i think I look, at our, I look across the team and I'm really proud of people because we've all learned a lot since we started, you know, like, for example, one of our, we have a disability activist with, with cerebral palsy and I've learned so much about disability, which is something that I just wasn't aware of. I didn't think about that enough, you know, and um, we have a couple of members of the, of the team are part of the LGBT community. So I've learned so much from them. So we're all learning from each other. Thank you. Um, yeah, and I think I think you're right. It's that learning piece, and it's that um, I think one thing you mentioned there, uh, authenticity, and sort of with businesses and companies. I think for me, one thing I've seen is that if you, it's 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 all well and good to sort of say you're trying to be diverse, but you need to sort of put actions in place and really maybe hire these pe those people that are diverse and have those diverse conversate those diverse conversations and or have people having those diverse co those conversations and things. So I think that's quite important. So thank you for that. Um, one last question, which I'm gonna it's gonna be a quick fire one to Helen and Adabola. So. Um, how can allies join ERGs and learn to learn and support? So if, if I can give you guys one minute each, um, and then we're going to go on to our breakout rooms. Okay, for allies, I think allies just need to know the story. Allies connect more to what they see us do, how we present ourselves, how we tell our story. And that's why I'm always a very big, um, I'm a big fan of any African or any black person that is willing to share where they're coming from so that others can understand the pain. If we expect people to feel our pain without them experiencing it, then I think it's just us just building a house in the cloud. Like many people don't get it until they understand exactly how, you know, or why you feel the way that you feel. And I have seen how maybe within Upspot, I don't know, Upspot just seems to spoil you. They give the old diversity topic so much attention. We have a whole team of project owners, program managers dedicated to DI and B. Like they tell you, go do your job. We have people whose jobs are to make sure that DI and B does not die. Like that is commitment. And with that, how I see this as well. They are like, okay, if they're putting so much attention on black, 
from Hub, and they're putting the same attention on um, LGBT, LGBTQ, someone should help me, LGBTQ, yeah. And they're putting the same on family, putting the same on disability. People were like, if they do that for me, I'm doing that for the next ERG. I'm doing that for the next team. I'm doing that for the next team. So I think allies really love to see things being done, either by you or anything around you. And they're like, I connect with the story. I've been there. I'm going in there. I'm supporting you. Go, go, go. We're behind you. We're holding you on. And uh, with that kind of attitude, I think the old DMB community will grow. Companies that don't have ERGs, they just need someone to put their hands up. I think about that earlier. Put your hand up and tell your story. Why do you need this? Why is it important to you? Are you be surprised? And we're willing to go with you to battle. Let's go do it, people. We'll make this happen. And I think with that, black people being hired in companies, black people mentoring others, black people leading conversations will continue to happen. We need to start. Let's tell our stories. Every time you have an opportunity, tell them where you're coming from. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, that literally ties into why Black and Irish were started to tell the stories of Black, Irish and mixed race people. So that is great to hear that that's one of the things that um, we can do to encourage allies. Um, Helen, you have one minute. I think I did well, uh, sort of, uh, she said it all, but I think what's very important is I find that um, sometimes allies they don't really know how to sort of engage, you know, a lot of people, they're very, you know, you have a lot of allies who are super supportive, but they just don't know how to start. And I feel sometimes they're waiting for us a permission. Sometimes from us, I'm like, no, you, you could just, you know, you can just stand up for what they want. And I think that goes back to what Adewola you were saying, because if we share that story, that sort of gives them and they'll connect. And then that sort of connection is there and then they can get behind you. But I do think um, we should ask we should actually share you know and ask for that sort of you know um support from allies and for example in black women in tech like we realize we're in ireland ireland is predominantly white all jobs everywhere they're all white men or you know women are just and i look at stem i'm black women in tech so stem is 25 percent of women we can't really break we don't have the data to break it down in ireland 25 percent of women are in stem but then ireland is a predominantly white country so what I do, I have, to, I need, I re, I'm, I'm relying on my allies and for them to sort of understand it. And that's what Adebo, like you said, is sharing that story. So what I do is how we're, be, how we've been able to get support. And for what we've done is reaching out to our allies, which is crucial in Ireland because Ireland is predominantly white. So I think what Adebo, like you said, it, I think it is putting your hand up, sharing those stories to try and, you know, express what is needed and get them to connect with you because it is true. They've never experienced it, and it's difficult sometimes for people to connect with it. And it's that's normal. Like I wouldn't, I would know how what it feels like to be black in, you know, another country. And it's true. So it does take us sharing those stories so they can understand. And I think that sometimes is that permission that will kind of allow them that space to really support us the way we need. But then for them to do that, they need to know why it matters. So what I do, what people have said to me in the center, what I've done is when I send off an email. For black women in tech for saying to support the book i told them why it mattered to me and someone came back to me and said helen because you said a lot of the times i see emails telling you to support it blah 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 and you give you all the statistics and all the codes we say helen the reason i remembered you your email was because you told me why it mattered so that's that's what they need sometimes you need to share that and that's where the story story so yeah that's that's what i'm gonna say it's it is really sharing that story to try and you know connect and tell them why they should get behind and support you so yeah thank you um no great answer and like i completely echo and agree with everything you said there um thank you guys very very much um for answering the questions for being really honest and open and hopefully people have maybe learned a thing or two 